Well, good evening again, everyone, and welcome to Memorial Stadium. Derek Wark, the Big D, and here we go again, the big rivalry game tonight. Port Huron Northern Huskies, Big Reds of Port Huron, should be an absolute dandy. The Huskies come in at 5-2 and two this evening. Big Reds at 4-3, and three. and my first thought tonight, this game reeks of playoff implications. I absolutely love it, and I can't wait for this one, more so than a lot of other years. This should be a classic. Huskies win. They're in the playoffs, no doubt about that. Big Reds, on the other hand, they've got to win this playoff game or this regular game to make the playoffs, and they've got to win next week as well to get in with six wins. There is the distinct possibility that both these two teams could make the playoffs. I would love to see that. I don't have the stats on that, but that is a rare thing when both of them make it. That could happen tonight. Well, the first thing that I think about this game we should talk about is Port Huron and their incredible defense. Uh, actually, Port Huron Northern and their great D. Uh, we'll talk about the Huskies first off. Uh, the Huskies have been tremendous all season long. Really a shocker for me, Kenny Sanders, great linebacker. He's really led this 11-man unit. They're tough. They're physical. They get the job done. They will come up and pop you just like Kenny Sanders. The Big Reds, on the other hand, they've really turned the tide with their defense. They were 1-3 after four weeks, and it really made you stop and wonder, but they've really picked it up. Three wins in a row, a lot of that has to do with LaForge and Schultz and their linebacking core. Great defense there as well. Well, welcome back, Justin Black. Last week, absolutely tremendous. Five touchdowns, count them, five last week, and 280 in the air. So a big, big key to this game for the Huskies, can you get to Justin Black? They don't have really a showcase in their offensive backfield as far as running backs. They'll go with Winslow Chapman. They'll go with Jarrett Chapman. They'll go with Therese Watkins. Jarrett Chapman, fastest guy in the field of any team, let's face it. If he gets going quickly, then the Huskies could be in trouble. But again, Winslow Chapman, he'll line up in the slot. He'll line up a tailback. He'll line up anywhere, and he's a guy that you definitely have to account for if you're the Huskies. One other thing about Black back as we see the crowd cheering. It's going to get loud really quick here. One thing about Justin Black and his return, Jarrett Chapman, the backup quarterback for the last couple of weeks, he can now go back to the far side of the football field, the cover corner position, and guard Macaulay Hill tonight in an absolute dream matchup. You got a great wideout, you got a great cover corner, and we will indeed see if the sayings hold true. If a cover corner as talented as Jarrett can indeed shut down an entire football field, and if he does, do the Huskies continue to go back to him We'll see. So finally, the big D's, big three keys to this football game tonight. Number one, again, the play of the quarterbacks. Johns Moore gets out of the pocket well, an excellent running QB. Black would prefer to sit back and pass and be a pocket passer, but keep in mind, Black can also run. He's got every skill in the world, very capable player in his own right. So again, I think at the beginning of this year, I would have said the way it started out, the Huskies all the way. Instead, I think this game's a flip of the coin. Finally, the running game and the pass rush. The running game first and foremost, I think it favors the Huskies. They've got Debo. They've got uh, Kenny Sanders. They've got Johns Moore out of the offensive backfield. And again, as well, the Big Reds will go with the Chapmans and they'll counter with Therese Watkins. I give the edge barely to the Huskies because of Debo and Kenny Sanders, who's been tearing everything up. And finally, in my opinion, the one who wins this game is going to be the one with the best pass rush. Who's it going to be, Port Huron? Here we go. Indeed, the big rivalry game is almost underway. Does the three-game streak in the rivalry stay here, or does it come back to the north side of Port Huron? We find out next. Indeed, let's get nasty. Ex-Indianapolis Colts head coach Tony Dungy has a new book. It's titled Uncommon, Finding Your Path to Significance. And the book is based on a quote he at one time heard his ex-high school football coach Cal Stoll once say, which was this. Success is uncommon, therefore not to be enjoyed by the common man. I'm looking for the uncommon people. Tonight we find out which players in the Battle of Port Huron wish to be the most uncommon and bring home the Brick Fowler Trophy for their team yet again. Sometimes it takes the players to put it all into perspective as well. Husky linebacker Kenny Sanders described this rivalry game like this. This game is all about big plays, who can keep their composure, and who has the most heart. 
Big Red Corner, Jared Chapman simply claimed it's the biggest rivalry game of his Port Huron career. That says it all. Well, tonight is the game we've all been waiting for. Sore Port Huron, just like Tony Dungy. The time to be uncommon is now. Good evening, everyone. I'm Derek Work, the Big D. Always uncommon, but very pumped up because tonight is the night we find out who the best team in Port Huron for 2010 indeed is. Again, CPHS Channel 6, the Port Huron Area School District Television Station, and again, Derek Wark, the Big D, kind of doing something a little bit different here tonight. We started from ground level right up here at me in the booth, and that's something we haven't done in a while, but again, for the big rivalry game, you got to bring out new things or things and some old ways or even some new things, but whatever you do, it's got to be professional, and we're going to do just that tonight for CPHS Channel 6 in the big game. Again, the first thing you look at when you talk about this game is records. Huskies 5-2 and two coming in. Big Reds 5, check that 4-3 and three coming in. Again, the Big Reds have to win these two games, their final two games to make the playoffs. Huskies have got to win just one, but if they win two, a possible home field advantage coming in Week 10. Are we jumping the gun? Definitely, but this game features two teams that could definitely make the playoffs, and I haven't said that in, man, how long since I've been here? Maybe not once of the 14 years that I've been here. So again, this game is gonna be packed, all kinds of crowd, both end zones packed, both sides as you'd expect packed, and man, let's get it on, what do you say? Big Reds to kick this one off. Apparently the Huskies have won the toss. Number 15 to do just that is Brandon Huntoon. Here we go, I can say for the first time in the rivalry game, let's get nasty Port Huron. Kick return right at the 20, quickly up 25, 30, and oh, a pretty good kick return to start things off, out past the 35 to the 37. 48 for the Huskies on the kick return, Lewis Nowakowski and out trots the Huskies and their offense. Five and two overall, two and two in the Mac Blue again. A run and gun look led by quarterback number two, Alex Johns Moore. A running quarterback first and foremost, not afraid to air it out at all though. It's an offense that'll do both but didn't pass very well last week. Just 26 passing yards against Anchor Bay. Wide out number 12, Macaulay Hill, Tyler Smith as well. Both primarily fly pattern deep threats on the outside particularly John's Moore's favorite target in Hill. Of course, don't sleep on 89, Tyler Smith as well, as mentioned. The running backs, number 30, Darian Hack, they call him the Debo. And as well, number 20, Kenny Sanders. Sanders big, Sanders is physical, and he gets big yardage at big moments when they need it the most. Debo as well, very elusive, has some nice cutback moves. The big red defense is out there, led by excellent linebackers, Number nine, Dominic Schultz. Number 13, Mike LaForge as well. But they're led particularly by the Chapmans in the defensive backfield. Jared Chapman, the number one rated player in the Port Huron Times Herald in their Blue Waters top 25 players because of his cover corner abilities. Also Winslow Chapman, number three. Here we go deep early. Johns Moore trying to hit Hill in stride, almost does. And he had the Big Reds beat. Couldn't do it. Well, right now, Hill is actually lined up on opposite sides of Jarrett Chapman, but that's pretty good coverage by the Big Reds. If that pass is hit in stride, it's probably six. Here you see Johns Moore, shotgun position. Look at it, he had a step, but just overthrows Macaulay Hill. So that's really a statement to say, despite the talk all week, despite the, the good pass defense that the Big Reds feature, we're gonna go right out, we're gonna attack right away and it's a really a different Husky team this whole season. Second down and 10 now from the 17. Again, shotgun look, Johns Moore for wideouts. Johns Moore, the keeper, tries to cut up field, but jump quickly and flatten quickly by my man, Mike LaForge. Again, I said it was a big, big key from the quarterback position. Which quarterback will be shut down the most? Look out though, there is a flag. No, there's not, that's the football. <laughs> I'm looking through windows here, and I couldn't see that one, but uh, I definitely saw this. Look at Johns Moore. Pushed a little bit in the back, but actually pushed right towards the tackle, and he certainly made it. 
So that'll bring up third and 13. People have said to me in past weeks on my blog at BigDSports.info, LaForge doesn't get that much credit. Well, I don't know why. Excellent player, no doubt about that, and he showed it there. Shotgun look on third down again. John's Moore gonna air it out deep again. This time to Tyler Smith. In and out of his hands again. Broken up by 10. Mark Chapman and the Huskies are gonna have to punt. It shocks me a little bit that the Huskies came out and tried to open things up right away. But their success last week was very limited on the pass. That might be why they're trying to get it going a little bit early here. That's right in his hands, too. That is two good passes by Johns Moore, really. Oh, so close. As we see the punt now, this is going to guarantee the Big Reds good field position. This one taken right at the 48, almost dropped, picked up Winslow, and pushed back before the 45. That's going to be about the 40. Well, they say the 45-yard line, right smack dab on it. 13, Corrigan, the tackle. But don't look now, flag on the play. We'll see what this is all about. The Big Reds come out, they're four and three overall, three and one in the Mac Blue. Again, they actually, strangely enough, have a better Mac Blue record than the team with the better overall record than them in the Huskies at five and two. So that's another thing that could certainly weigh big dividends in this game is the fact that the Big Reds can not only still make the playoffs, but they can also still win the Mac Blue with just that one loss. Huskies two losses, and a very big play just happened there a moment ago. Roughing the kicker against the Big Reds. Guess what, folks? It's a Husky first down. Well, I was about to talk about the black attack offense, but we'll talk about that in just a moment because first, the Huskies get the ball right back, and we'll see if they can get that run going with the likes of Sanders, Debo, and all the rest. I believe that's Sanders out there right now. First and 10 from the 29, 10 and 45 left in the first, still no score. John's Moore, the keeper, good block in front of him, Kenny Sanders, and rocked immediately, and the big red crowd are really loud right now. Chris Warzynski on the tackle. And they only list Warzynski at 5'6", 250. A short guy, but certainly plays big and made a good tackle there on Johns Moore. And you don't let number two escape. That's a good job by the Big Reds there. And a big key all day is to keep him in check and let him remain a pocket passer. Do not let him get out there and get big yards. So far, this Big Red defense looks excellent. Shotgun look again with four wide. Second down and six. Johns Moore shotgun across the middle and a miscommunication completely from Tyler Smith and Johns Moore. Wide open man was Smith. He just wasn't looking. I'm telling you, this place right now is loud. Obviously the big red sidelines is always loud right directly under me, but right now it's flat out deafening <laughs> when they make a big play. This game means so much this year to all these kids, but particularly the Huskies as a senior group because they've never beaten the Big Reds. This is their fourth year. If they want to do it, the time is now. Third down and six from the 33. Shotgun look. Here come the Big Reds on a blitz. Schultz gets to him. This is a back lateral, and he's open to the outside. Pushed out of bounds at the 40 and a first down for the Huskies. It's well set up, and they made it work. Hack trailed the wideout, who I believe was Smith. The hook and lateral works to perfection. And Schultz almost got to Johns Moore there on the blitz. But here you see, now that's Macaulay Hill. As a defender, that is hard to stop because you've got to follow Hack like something's going on and hope he doesn't get the ball, which he did. Nicely done by the Huskies. They've got a first down, fresh set of downs, ball mark 38. First and 10, give to Debo, very elusive. He can get out there. Got about three this time, that'll bring up second down. 12 over there among tacklers, Austin Bugner. 
Well, last week's games, Port Huron Northern, of course, a 21-20 loss. They didn't convert an extra point late in that one. That's a tough way to lose a 21-20 on a missed extra point. We'll talk about that more as this game goes along, as well as the Big Reds last week, and a huge win for them. As mentioned, Black, a tremendous game last week. Shotgun, Johns Moore, all day to throw it. Airing it out deep again. Fine defensive play, Mark Chapman. The Huskies are not shying away at all from the pass. The Huskies thought it was pass interference. They're all like, what the heck? Sanders couldn't believe it. Johns Moore held his hands out in disgust, but too much time here. And there you see a perfect delivery again. They are convinced they can beat the Big Reds deep like that. And that's pretty close. I think it's just a fine defensive play. And Chapman's made a couple of them already. Huge play right now, third and seven from the 35. Johns Moore to pass, stumbles first, can't make it though. 89 got him, Jordan Small, the tall, tall guy at six foot seven. He's called Small, but he's tall. And he made that one, fourth down. Huskies indicating they're going to go for it here. Well, Johns Moore stumbled on that last run, but I'm not so sure he wouldn't have, have gotten it anyway because Big Reds had that played well, and they jumped him. Oh, here we go. The biggest play thus far of the first quarter. Fourth and six at the 35. Johns Moore shotgun. Four wide look, one back set. Johns Moore to the right. Well defended. That's not going to do it, though. Head out of bounds. Smith caught it. But 14 made the tackle, Taj King. Turnover on downs. Out trots the Port Huron High Big Reds and their offense. I call them the Black Attack. Number seven, Justin Black. He's injury prone, we know that. But he gets the call tonight after a tremendous week last week against GPS, Gross Point South. It's hard to give the words for how well he played with 280 in the air and five touchdowns. Whoa, mama. For running backs, it depends on what they want to do, what Coach Mullen sees. He can put either number three, Winslow Chapman, back there, number six, Jarrett Chapman in the backfield. Winslow as well in the slot. They both can run. They're both exciting, and both Chapmans a flair for the dramatic. Therese Watkins as well, number one. He'll also get some carries from the tailback position. The wideouts are Winslow Chapman, 17 Zmolik, and don't sleep on number eight, Tyler Robotham. Three touchdown receptions last week. They lead the way, of course, Zmolik converted from a tight end a season ago as we see the Big Reds call timeout. The Husky D on the other side of the ball. They're led by two, well, two excellent linebackers, four really good linebackers though. Kenny Sanders, I was gonna say as well, Austin Pickering. Tremendous linebacker as well in his own right. But up front as well with guys like Jalen Hayes, Calder Reno. They can certainly play well. Reno, especially in the early parts of the season, was really, really good. Debo, Darian Hack on the backside, as well as Mitch McFedrin, tall corner. And we'll see how he does today defending against, and who they really choose to defend him against. Does he defend against Winslow? Zmolik? Does he go against Robatham? We'll see. But again, there's great matchups all over the football field here tonight, and I called it before this game. It's a dead even game. At one and three, I thought the Big Reds were in trouble, but they've gone and hit three in a row, including three in a row in this rivalry series, I might add. And Huskies come in off a loss. They're five and two overall, Big Reds four and three. We'll see, five wide, the Big Reds start off with. Man in motion, that's Winslow to the outside. Look out, very dangerous. Gets out there, but a flag first, and we'll see as he's hit out of bounds. Just after the 35-yard line of the Big Reds. Huskies pointing that way. So Winslow Chapman demonstrating right there. These Chapmans, real good athletes. They're sneaky. And really, you have to pay attention to where they line up offensively. Again, the Huskies primarily a 3-4 D, but it becomes a 5-2 when you see Kenny Sanders 
Number 20, move up and play the end. He will do that on occasion. 54, Patterson. The aforementioned number three, Reno up front of tackles. 24, Pickering. 13, Corrigan. And 20, Kenny Sanders leads the way. Excellent linebackers. Debo Darian Hack, number 20, and Mitch McFedrin, as well mentioned earlier, is number three. There's the players for you. Now it's all about the game ahead. Black, shotgun again with five wide. First and 16 coming off the penalty. Shotgun again. And again, we have a stoppage in play as Jared Chapman got the ball. And they were going to go the other side with it. So you send one Chapman one way and the other the other. It's going to be encroachment actually against the defense for the Huskies. So that five they just lost, you can bring that right on back. So that gets a bit of a, a cheer from the Big Red Faithful over here on my side. Again, it's CPHS Channel 6. Again, it's Derek Wark, the Big D from Memorial Stadium, the big rivalry game, and one that I've been looking forward to for a long, long time. I love it when the schedule calls for this game late in the year instead of, what was it, week three the last couple? I didn't like that at all. I like this a lot better. Same play call, Jared Chapman. He's going to throw this ball, airing it out deep, but there's too much coverage over there, and Smolik is going to be ruled out of bounds. I like the play call, and that shows you right there the kind of gadget plays you can do when you don't have just one quarterback, you have a second one that can not only run, but he can pass too. Jared Chapman, the backup quarterback from a week ago when he was in there, or Black actually a week ago, two weeks ago, Chapman was uh, in charge here. There you see, oh, that's very close actually. I might have to see that one again. It really, it's one foot, so it depends on where he got it. But on the replay there, I think that looks like a catch. Very, very close. Good defensive positioning by the Huskies there on the outside as well to defend the pass from Black. Second and 11, ball mark 32, shotgun. Fake again, Jared Chapman to throw it again. Airing it out again, Smolik caught. First down after a gain of 13. He went up to get it, and your first thought is, that's not a great pass, but when you have a big guy like Zmolik, you make him go up and get it, and he did, and he got it. Boy, this game's looking more and more like it's gonna be more passing yards for Jared Chapman. Wow, that one there is close, isn't it? Watch that right foot. That right foot might just have been in bounds. Boy, that was close. Mugged immediately and brought down immediately. A loss of a yard. Huskies all fired up after that one. 99, don't call him Wayne Gretzky. Jalen Hayes as well. 13, Corrigan. And Chad Patterson, number 56. There you see the pack. They've been there for a long time tonight. Wow. You know what? I think he's in. If he has control of the ball, I think his feet are in. Great job, big guy in the truck there, EJ Shea, to get that replay too, might I add. That is so close. Black, right up the middle, look out. That's something you don't like to see as a quarterback get up like that, not be downed and he's in the air being tackled. Kenny Sanders made the tackle for the Huskies. Again, last week, the Huskies, a 21-20 loss to Anchor Bay. Just 7-0 at halftime. Typical great game, though, against a pretty good team. Great defense by the Huskies against Michigan State recruit Taiwan Jones for Anchor Bay. So, And they needed it against a running back that talented. Darian Hack, the big play in that game, a 48-yard pick six. And we have yet another timeout for the Big Reds. So whether or not it's the crowd noise of the Huskies, they have to take their second timeout of the quarter and first half. Six and 23 ticks to go in the first quarter. No score in the big Super Bowl of Port Huron. Derek Wark, the big D, CPHS, Channel 6. Well, John's more in that game last week, a 34-yard touchdown. Kenny Sanders, also a 26-yard touchdown run. Here's the replay in super-duper slow motion. Big fella in the truck getting creative. 
does he have control? See, that's the thing. That first foot really isn't down, so you have to look at the right one in that case. You know what? I just don't know. I don't. If the super duper slow mo can't help you, <laughs> what do you do? The key is, because I don't think he planted his left foot, is his right foot in bounds, because it looked to me like he had control of the football. I just don't know. But that's why they're referees and why I'm up here in the booth, because I don't want that decision. Great effort, though, 17, Alex Smolik. Close. Referee called it incomplete. That's all that matters. Third down. And six. To pass again. Black outside. Smolik caught. Downed immediately after a gain of about 10 and a first down. Move the sticks. PH. I like that matchup. McFedrin against Smolik, but so far, 17's winning. He's barely getting the space. I tell you, if Black waits even another half second, that's incomplete. Alex Smolik has started this game very, very strong. Again, a converted tight end from a year ago. He's become a wideout this season and certainly one of Justin Black's favorite targets. From the 41, first and 10. Looked like movement first. I think they got away with it. Black, the pump fake. He goes right down. Patterson, 56. Six as well. M Calder, Reno on the half sack. They can get pressure. There's no doubt about it. I called it. This northern defense, they'll come up, they'll wallop you, they'll get you, they're aggressive. They've done it all year long. Why would things change now? Second and 16 from the 47. Black again from shotgun with four wide and one back. Black to the outside, that's Schultz in the backfield. Cuts up field, gets good yardage past the original line of scrimmage. Got close to 10, but they're still gonna bring up third down and long. Northern, a lot of rushing yards in that game last week. 205 to 135, but Anchor Bay completely shut down that Husky passing game. And the passing yards last week, listen to this. 127 for Anchor Bay, 26 for Northern. Johns Moore just six for 14 for 26 and a pick last week. He had a nice game in the rushing area though, 24 for 126. Kenny Sanders as well, seven for 74. On third down. Black with pressure on him, gets hit hard and dropped hard. Austin Pickering. That's the thing when you have a good linebacking core like the Huskies do. Can they run well east to west? Yes. And Austin Pickering is an excellent example of how well a linebacker runs east to west. Here you see, he's not in the picture here. There he is right there though. And he came up and just rocked him. And every coach's delight right there. When you're not just rocking a guy, but you're doing it to the quarterback. They love that, believe me. Coach Van Drew over there, the defensive coordinator of the Huskies, he's smiling ear to ear after that one. Standing on his own 44, check out the Husky 44, ready to punt this one off, is Jared Chapman. Wobbler, and they'll let it go into the end zone, and that's going to be a touchback. Chapman has the right idea on that pun. He just kicked it too hard. And the Huskies get the touchback. No score so far. The Battle of Port Huron, 326 to go in the first. Derek Wark, the Big D, CPHS, Channel 6 from Memorial Stadium. Macaulay Hill, interestingly enough, about last week. I don't know, was he hurt? Did he just not play? Was he... I don't even know what his condition was. He didn't have a catch in the game. Tyler Smith just two for 12, but this Taiwan Jones had almost 100 yards rushing and 100 yards receiving to end the Husky four game winning streak last week. 
We'll talk about the Big Reds and what they did last week here as the game goes along. Kenny Sanders, nice cutback move. Oh, he's a battering ram. Just bowls forward back to the D and got about nine. Coach Connell on the game last week and obviously the extra point that was missed and they lost the game because of it. He said it wasn't the deciding play of the game, it was the final play of the game. Well, there you go. A little bit unlucky. But the Big Reds, they had a great game. 35-21 against Gross Point South. I didn't think you could score that many points, period, on Gross Point South. Second down and one from the 29. Look out, Kenny Sanders. He's done this the last two weeks in a row. Big, big runs when they needed it the most. He's shy of the 45. Up close to midfield for the Huskies and easily a first down. Well, you can't say enough for what Kenny Sanders has done for this club in his senior season. Defensively, he's got attitude, but offensively, he's really coming into his own with a strong offensive line as a tailback. We should also mention it's Husky senior night here tonight too. The Big Reds have that next week. Sanders again. Like a bigger pinball, just kind of boom, boom, boom off of everybody and through everybody and six more. Well, the Big Reds last week, 35-21, really a shocker to me considering the Huskies. They beat Gross Point South just 10-7 here in week two. And that was a real defensive game, but to put up 35 in their home, 35, wow, just wow. Tyler Robotham, three touchdown receptions, one for 38, one for 26, and one for 10. Smolik as well, a 60-yard touchdown pass from Black. Chapman, a 20-yarder. Second down and four, Johns Moore. Good rushing yards, Johns Moore a stiff arm and falls down eventually at the 27. That's two runs to that right side. You have to contain number two, especially knowing that last week the Huskies struggled on the pass so much. You cannot let him get out of that pocket. I'd rather pick your poison with him as a pocket passer than a rusher, believe me. From the 21, first and 10, minute 46 to go in the first. John's Moore shotgun again, lead block this time and a good one. John's Moore upfield, 10, five, John's Moore in. No, he's down at the one. Three plays now on the rush to that right side and through, but this, folks, is as good of an initial block as you're gonna see. Was it the full back up front ahead of, of Johns Moore? Was it the uh, running back in Kenny Sanders? He just did a perfect block, just completely took out the tackler and freed Johns Moore up with a huge hole. That's what blocking is all about right there because it sprung him free past the line. That's just a great job. And the Huskies are gonna call a timeout here. Let's see if we can get a replay of that block a minute ago. Because that's picture perfect. If there was a definition in the dictionary about a block in football, folks, this would be it. He put his body on him and stopped him. Again, some of the stats from last week's game, 35-21. Rushing yards, Port Huron, 126. Just 68 for Gross Point South. Everything else fairly even, but Black's numbers were off the charts. 15 for 20, 280, and five TDs. Whoa mama, the Black attack is back. Rushing, Chapman, seven for 46. Uh, Winslow, that is, Jared Chapman, six for 34. Receiving Zmolik, he was awesome. Six for 151, and Robotham, four for 79, and three touchdown receptions. Huskies knock, knock, knocking on the big red door now. First and goal from the one. 55 seconds left in the first quarter. Huskies threatening. Very impressive drive for them. 
That's 24 up ahead of Kenny Sanders. I think he laid the block out a minute ago. I think that's Austin Pickering. Here he goes again. Got the block again. Touchdown, Huskies. Kenny Sanders, the senior. I said it earlier in the year, there's a guy that is just ecstatic about this whole season. To be five and two after your first seven games, record-wise, that says a lot. But knowing the new coach came in for these seniors in their final year, where they haven't beaten the Big Reds yet. Obviously, three years in a row, the Big Reds have won this rivalry, so this game, very important for the Husky seniors. And Kenny Sanders, really, let's face it, he doesn't have to say it. It's the biggest game for him since he's been here. And so far, so good for them. They're up 6 nothing. Quinn Kotzko for the extra point try. And these are very important for the Huskies after missing the big one last week that decided the game. So every single extra point right now is big for them. That one splits the uprights. It's good. 51 seconds left in the first quarter. There you see it. Huskies 7. Port Huron nothing. The Battle of Port Huron so far. Edge, P-H-N. Derek Wark, the Big D, C-P-H-S, and Channel 6. So far, really it's been the kind of game I would expect. Very close. Teams kind of feeling each other out. But something to be concerned about, and we'll see how fast the Big Reds adjust to the right side of the offense. They've had three big runs. Sanders opened it right wide open and a couple by Alex Johns Moore. I think three in a row by him. Setting up, of course, a couple big ones again by, by Sanders and mainly the leading blocker by him. I talked about it earlier. Just great blocking ahead of him to push back the D and there's how they're rewarded, a seven nothing Husky lead. <laughs> Connell for president. That's a good sign, I like that. They keep winning like they have been at five and two. And more to come, probably. Instead of these one win and two win seasons, Connell may, may well run for president. The 10 to the 15, now to the 20. Look out, Jarrett Chapman. Very dangerous, very sneaky. And here goes number six. 45, now 40. They make the tackle, but not before. I said it earlier, the Chapmans have the ability to bust the game wide open. There's the fastest player on the football field, and he did it. Inside the Husky, 40 to the 38. That is just a tremendous run back when you consider where the momentum was. They tried to strip him, they just didn't, didn't tackle him. And look at the speed, because you've got two and three guys running next to him, and they don't get him. I believe Macaulay Hill actually made the tackle. So that brings the big red crowd right back into it. What a tremendous answer that is. 42 seconds left in the first quarter clock. I tell you, this game is shaping up to be a doozy. It really is. Because you're already seeing big plays out of both teams. None bigger than that, except maybe if he would have scored. But the Chapmans are dangerous. You've got to account for them. Black, keeper, not much. Still forward, got maybe four. Reno was over there. 56 as well, Chad Patterson made the tackle. Well, I want to congratulate all of the players in this game on making the Port Huron Times-Herald top 25 players of the year. I'm gonna name them off because that's really an honor and there's so many good players on both these teams this year. There's a lot more that could have made it. You can't take everybody, but you know what, close. Well, that's just offside. And I believe on the right side. We second down and eight when play resumes. One more play, by the way, in the first quarter before that'll do it. Four seconds left on the clock. The 25th player was Mitch McFedrin. 
Well, it's a legal procedure against the Big Reds. That's going to set them back. But McFedrin was 25 on that list. Such a tall body. They like him a lot in man-to-man -man coverage because of that tall body. 17, Tyler Corrigan, the linebacker for the Huskies. Another great player. Certainly stepped up last year, and since then there's been no looking back for him. I'll continue that list as the second quarter gets underway. But first, the first quarter is done for Memorial Stadium. The Battle of Port Huron, the Super Bowl of Port Huron, so far favors the Huskies at 7-0. But don't look now, thanks to number six, Jarrett Chapman. Big Reds are knocking. Derek Work, the Big D, CPHS Channel 6. Back to Memorial Stadium in a moment with the second quarter. Welcome back to the second quarter here from Memorial Stadium. Again, Derek Work, the Big D for CPHS Channel 6. I don't know what you call them girls on the field. Are they the, just the cheerleaders or the fly girls? Or, But they're doing a great job here. Some end of quarter entertainment. Trying to get the Huskies side all fired up. Well, let me tell you, they have reason to be fired up. Some great runs at the end of that last drive. Very impressive drive. They went right down the field. A 7-0 lead. Coach Connell, by the way, came out there and was clapping for the girls there, so he liked that performance as well. Back with the second quarter, though. Second and 13, Black from shotgun to the outside in the flat. Smolik, nothing. Debo over there to tackle him, and Jalen Hayes as well. That play there works only if you have the first block because when you're catching that, when you're Smolik and you're catching that ball, you don't see the defender coming, it's open game. But if you get that first block, you spring him free. Certainly it could have been used on that play right there. But Debo with the big tackle. And 99, Jalen Hayes as well. Third down and long from the 47, it's third and 19. Black, shotgun again, Patterson. Airing it out, in and out of the hands of Smolik. Hit hard by Debo. And 21 as well, Hunter Potter. And the Big Reds are going to have to punt. Chad Patterson almost got to black there. Good pass rush thus far for the Huskies. I said that's a big key, how often they get. To number seven, Justin Black. There you see the replay a minute ago. Great defense, Huskies. And now they're going to be rewarded for it. They're going to get the ball back. 48, Nowakowski standing at his own 12. And to punt this ball, I believe, again, Jared Chapman. Standing at his own 40. Low snap, bobbles it. Almost blocked. I don't know how he got it off, but he did. And the crowd loves the fact that he did get it off. And another thing the crowd loves, flag on the play, and I think it's going to be roughing the kicker. It is roughing the kicker. First down, Big Reds, folks. I tell you, that really is a kicker to the defense. Because you, you go and you think, we made a big stop. That's a first down. So the Big Reds get the same gift the Huskies got earlier in the first quarter. Again, the top 25 players of the year that are playing in this game from the Port Huron Area Times Herald. The first two, 25, Mitch McFedrin, 17, Tyler Corrigan, 14, Macaulay Hill. A number one wideout on any team. I think he's too far down on this list without a doubt. He's got speed, he's got size, good hands, and great ball skills. It shocked me to see Hill at 14. 
Shotgun look again. Black off play fake, right side, not too much. Sanders over there among tacklers. And Debo as well for the Huskies. 13 is Dominic Schultz of Port Huron High, a senior. Linebacker slash wide out slash running back. Good size, good athleticism, and just a really good athlete for his size too. We'll get to 11 here in just a minute. That's where the next player ranked. Black, play action. Good pass rush, Huskies again to the outside. Might have just thrown it away. Mitch McFedrin over there, good defense. And tender receiver number eight, Tyler Robotham, the 6'2", 175 pound junior. So certainly Robotham will be the leading target next season. Number 11 on that list was Justin Black. I'm surprised that he was so far down that list, except for the fact that he's injury prone. We know that. Darian Hack got eight. Debo, the guy who just made that tackle a minute ago. Kenny Sanders got four. Great linebacker, great running back, great leader. And the number one rated player in the Port Huron area, Times Herald, Jared Chapman, for his cover corner abilities on the outside. They say he's rated one. Certainly opened the door for some great matchups in this game. But a lot of these matchups are, are dead, dead right on the money even in this game tonight. That's why I say you flip a coin. It could just be that close right up till the end. Third down and seven from the 29, a big play here. They send the man in motion. They give to the outside, nothing doing as Schultz is downed by Tyler Corrigan and Jalen Hayes. Neither was fooled. And the Big Reds forced with fourth down. That's a bit of a tough play call and end around when you need a lot of yards on third down, but this is also a real good spot for a fake right now. I'll tell you, it wouldn't shock me. Here's the replay, kind of an inside play, inside outside, and they jumped him right away. Well, no, they thought about a fake maybe, but Chapman just clearing the space and he punted it too hard again into the end zone. And it's gonna be yet another touchback for the Huskies. 10.05 to go in the first. Seven, nothing, Huskies still lead. The Battle of Port Huron over the Crosstown rival, Big Reds. Derek Wark, Big D, CPHS, Channel 6. Where I tell you, especially on a night like this one, being big is a state of mind. There's the big red band, a marching band. They had their performance before the game. I would guess that the Husky band will have theirs at halftime. And both bands play the national anthem together. That's nice to see. Shotgun play fake. Johns Moore left side. All kinds of daylight. Johns Moore past the 35 to the 36. Still battling, no whistle, might have got to the 40. Now they're marking at 38. Well, they've got to make adjustments. Because on those types of play calls, quarterbacks should not continue to keep getting this kind of yardage. And it's recent too. Because the last drive he did this three and four times. Here he goes again. They chose the right side though. This is up left, so Johns Moore looks like he might have that for a little while at least in this football game. Four wide again, one back. Johns Moore shotgun on first and 10 from the 38. He stands at the 30. Good protection, airing it out deep. Almost in the hands of Macaulay Hill and we have a flag for pass interference. The only problem I have with that, I do think it was pass interference, but I have a problem with the flag being thrown when it was. On those play calls, you gotta throw that right away. I think they're calling, well, I think they're calling holding. Here's a look at the replay again. It might be defensive holding on the backside. Could have very easily been intercepted, but I think they just fell into the wide out. I think he's gonna call defensive holding. He is. 
So it's going to be a first down. That obviously not a spot of the foul call, or at least if it is, it didn't happen back where that reception is made. So, But my question is, why is the flag thrown over there when the ball is marked where it is? That's why I'm in the booth and not on the field. Shotgun look again. John's more the keeper. He's got blocking to the outside again. This time to the right side again. Got 10 more and a first down as Winslow Chapman makes the tackle, but not before John's more makes it look easy again. And when I want more, I look to John's more. First down, Huskies. Well, as mentioned earlier, Port Huron can win a share of the Mac Blue Championship with a win the next two weeks, but they need to win them both for a trip to the playoffs. Three and one, four and three overall. They've got to stay in this game though, and John's Moore making these runs like this is not going to put Coach Mullins to sleep. Shotgun again. Sanders falls through, tries to barrel his way around 54, Connor Palmatier. But Palmatier wins that battle. Sanders stumbles a little bit, and that brings up second down, got maybe one. Port here in Northern has two losses in the Mac Blue, but they do earn a trip to the playoffs with a win and can still earn a first round home game here by winning out. This is the odd season where both Port Huron teams can make the playoffs, which I would absolutely love to see. But interesting enough, the team with the worst overall record has the better divisional record. Big Reds can still win that division. Huskies, it's unlikely because of their loss to Gross Point South. Second down, the play fake again. This time they trip up Johns Moore at the feet. And it's a good open field tackle by Alex Smolik. That's how you do it. Third down, it becomes a real big play for the big red defense. Again, if you're wondering tonight, it would be the first playoff berth for Port here in Northern, should they make it, since 1999. I said 2002 earlier. 2002 was the last time they won five games. So there's a quick stat coming your way on Port here in Northern senior and rivalry night. Shotgun Johns Moore had to jump to get the snap. Cuts up field again. Flag on the play to the outside. Johns Moore out of bounds, just shy of the 15. Flag thrown back at the line of scrimmage. We'll see what this is all about. Big Reds certainly need a break and they're gonna get it. Holding against the Huskies. So that run all for nothing. If you're wondering, the Big Reds are currently tied with Anchor Bay and Gross Point South in the Mac Blue, one loss each. They play Sterling Heights and Lance Cruz tonight respectively, so those are almost definite victories for them. So very important for the Big Reds if they wanna not only consider the playoffs, also maybe even get a share of the division title, they've gotta win tonight. Coach Mullins put her all into perspective though. I'll tell you what he said in just a moment. Shotgun look, third and long, big play for the Big Red defense. And certainly in this game so far, the biggest play. Third and 11 from the 42, Johns Moore looking deep right sideline. Hill is out of bounds. I don't know if he's pushed out or not, but he's running out of bounds, which means he can't come back. I don't know if he was pushed out or not. Let's see the replay here. Here's shotgun look again. Both teams doing the shotgun a lot today. Here you see airing it out. It doesn't really show you there, but yeah. Macaulay Hill's feet are already out of bounds there. Hill, whom I just spoke of, is own 45 to punt this one for the Huskies. Great close game as expected here. Wobbly punts, takes a nice Husky bounce. Did the Big Reds touch that ball? If they did, I can't believe they did. Referees may have to talk it over. They're looking bottom of the scrum. It's Husky football. Are you kidding me? If you are a kick returner in that situation, 
I can't advise it enough, just get out of the way by 20 yards if you have to. It's a big rivalry game, they want to make a play, they're aggressive, they want to do it, I understand that, but he's got to get out of there, man. Yeah. Well, that's a huge break for the Huskies now. Big Reds need a turnover on defense badly. I formation look this time. First and 10 from the 15, Sanders. Thought about going behind the blocker, didn't do it. Got up field, got four. On the tackle for the Big Reds, 55, Ali Fayad. Again on the game today, Coach Ryan Mullen said today that the goal of this team is to try and look at this game like it's nothing more than a regular league game. Not to put all the focus on it being the big rivalry game, obviously. And the fact that it's worth something more than, you know, just a regular game. It's a playoff berth, possible division title. They tried very hard to come into this game thinking it's just like every other game. Don't get lost and caught up in the hype of the rivalry. And I think that's a real good game plan. Johns Moore inside, caught, incomplete. Thought it was caught at the one, he dropped another one. Chapman, I tell you, Mark Chapman, number 10, making some very fine defensive plays so far in this one. A certainly early candidate for defensive player of the game is number 10. But the biggest single stat for me coming into this game is that the Husky seniors have never beaten the Big Reds. That has to be in their mind, whether it's the front of their mind or the back, it's gotta be there. Third down and five from the 10, huge play. Sanders, nothing. That one was eaten alive. LaForge over there, 54 as well. Connor Palmatier. It's fourth down. There you see the pack on the upper left of your screen. They came early and they were the first ones here. And I don't know who would set this up, but the Big Reds were actually practicing on that side of the field earlier. Anyway, here's the field goal try. It's a fake instead. The kicker, Kotzko, leading the way. It's a pass. It's incomplete. Potter was going to throw that football to the intended receiver, Kenny Sanders, and he didn't do it. Excellent defense. Big Reds were prepared, and it's loss of downs. Big Reds take over on downs in a very, very important time. That's one of those where the Huskies have got to be disappointed. Getting a gift like that, gift field position, and they can't do anything on it. Great job, Big Red defense, absolutely. And they have really picked up their game since week one, boy. Black from inside the 10, standing about the five. First and 10 from the 10. Outside the 10, Chapman caught it. Upfield quickly. Out past the 15 to the 17, close to a first down. You account for Jared Chapman, absolutely. Pro I said it earlier, probably fastest guy in the football field. But you cannot sleep on Winslow Chapman and certainly not Mark Chapman, very talented players. Hand off, spin move, six, Jared Chapman pushed back. Hayes trying to rough him up a little bit. He better watch it. In a rivalry game like this, plays like that do stand out. But again, yeah, the pack getting back to it. The Big Reds were actually warming up today on the same side as the pack, and man, were they ever vocal down there. They were screaming at the Big Red players, and oddly enough, for one of their drills, they lined up right under the pack at the 15-yard line. There you see them. They were right there doing their, their pre-game warm-ups today. Of all places to do your warm-ups, right there. <laughs> it was interesting to watch. The Big Reds don't listen to it, but I guarantee you they hear it. Play fake, Black up the middle quickly. To the 25. Well, 
Well, next week, the final one for both teams, obviously. Depending on how it goes this week, there could be a playoff game in both their future, though, so we'll see. But the final regular season game, October 22nd, for the Big Reds at St. Clair High School. Check that the Huskies at St. Clair High School. The Big Reds instead next week, they're home here to Madison High School, which is another reason why this game is huge. They expect to beat Madison. Back to passes Black. Thinks about throwing it, now keeps it. Look out. Potter came up with a great play. 21 there. Hunter Potter, because it's a play that all defensive backs, they crave. A pass that's telegraphed right in your wheelhouse to lay a hit and a big smack kind of hit on the wide out there. It was dropped nonetheless. Evening, gentlemen, and the rest of the big red crowd over here on this side. Certainly not too happy about what they've seen thus far, but it's only 7 nothing. Anything goes, and the defense has played very well for the Big Reds thus far to match the great play of the Huskies. Black to pass, it's a screen look to Jira Chapman. Serious wheels, but they had this. Defended very well and he dropped the football. 57, Glenn Hartman jumped on it and it was the saving grace for the Big Reds. Well, the Big Reds have got to hold on to the ball. It's that easy, whether it's special teams or even on on routine catches or runs, or it's gonna be a long night. Fourth and short. They say two from the 31. 3.05 left to go in the first half. Again, seven nothing. Huskies on top of the Big Reds. Derek Wark, the Big D. CPHS Channel 6. Port Huron Area School District. Television station. And a very loud, jam-packed Memorial Stadium, as you'd expect. Justin Black, great spin move. First down and more. Gain of close to 13. Well, that right there is simply a case of not making the tackle. You cannot have a quarterback spin his body while touching yours, going around that side and letting him get away. You can't do it. I said it earlier, Black is not just a passer. He can also flat out run the football. Here you see, well, Sanders went to hit him. I think he felt like he was just gonna go down and there you saw Black just get by him. From the 41, first and 10, 2.24 to go in the half. Black, the pass, look out, gets decked. Almost a beautiful one-arm grab. Debo, good coverage. And a great job there by Winslow Chapman, who almost came down with that football. Black absolutely got smoked in the legs there. That's great pass rush. Was it Kenny Sanders who decked him? Either way, the ref's talking to the Huskies down there. That might have been even a warning. Look out, you hate to see a quarterback hit hard like that at the lower level. In the legs area, the thighs, or even lower than that. Second and 10, shotgun look. Immediate give, dropped. Hayes waiting for him, a whole horde of Husky tacklers. 56, Patterson as well. And 55, Trent Beebe among tacklers. So a very big third and nine now coming for the Big Red offense who are yet to score this half. Very interesting to me that they've gotten away from going to Alex Mollick. The way he came out and the way he started in this game I really thought he might be the factor. Macaulay Hill is over there guarding him right now. I'm surprised they don't try him again. Shotgun, they're looking over there. Over the middle, caught by Robotham. First down and more. Look out, outside, got a whole lot of yardage. Up to the 35, and possibly the 37 actually, where they mark it. I said beginning of the broadcast, Tyler Robotham is a wide receiver you cannot sleep on, and oftentimes defenses will sleep on slot receivers. Here you go, right over the middle. Beautifully done and he's wide open. More of a zone look by the Huskies that time. 
Robotham beat it. Nice play call and it worked. One other interesting stat. Big Red's no timeout, slow snap. Black goes down. Calder Reno, baby. You know, it's always funny in these rivalry games. It's so hard for me to watch these games because, and it's funny, I cheer for them both, really. There's no favorites up here. Five of the nine weeks of the regular season, I see one team or the other every year, and I don't have a favorite, believe me. The only big request up here in the booth is that it continues to be a good, close game, and we're seeing it, 7 nothing. That's all you wish for in these games. To be neutral and see a good one, and obviously nobody to get hurt, but... So far, it lives up to the hype. Not so much from an offensive standpoint, but certainly from a team versus team standpoint. And really, the defenses are stepping up and they're making big plays when they have to the most. Might I also add, it's getting cold here. I just checked my heater up here in the booth. And it was on fan, if you can believe that. <laughs> no wonder I'm so cold. The thing's blowing air at me. Okay, it's on heat now. We're good to go here from, a, again, a chilly Memorial Stadium here tonight for the big rivalry game. This is the time of year I love the rivalry games, and they've got great football weather for this one. From the 46, second and 19, Black. Corrigan, good pass. Pass rush from 13 there, in and out of the hands this time of Robotham. And it brings up third down. Almost holding by the Big Reds there. They grabbed a hold of 13 Corrigan's jersey. Very close, but they did let go of it. But great pass rush by the Huskies. I said that earlier as my final point of the three keys to winning this game. The pass rush up front. Who gets to the other's quarterback more? If you don't want to be beat for big yardage on the pass, you've got to get to Justin Black. And the Huskies are doing it right now. Their senior core of linebackers are doing a strong job. Third and 19 from the 46. Passing again over the middle, broken up by guess who? Lucky number 13 for him. Unlucky 13 for everybody else, Tyler Corrigan. And it's fourth down. For Port Huron fans right now that might be watching this shocked that they don't have points on the scoreboard, believe me, this is the way this defense is. They are that good. I've seen them for, what, four weeks? First four weeks of the year, actually. They are good. It's that simple. Nowakowski drops the football. We might have a payback. Well, we have to wait for the official's decision here. Great timing by the Big Reds to time this ball right when he caught it. Who gets up last from the bottom of that pile? Who has the ball? I think they're saying the Huskies got it back. If they did, they barely got it back. If you're a kick returner and you drop the ball, jump on it as quick as you can. And they did there, and they're lucky they did. Here you see the replay. Watch the timing by the Big Reds because there's no fair catch called. Boom, that's perfect. That is outstanding, that's why the fumble. Anytime you can go catch, boom. Awesome. And it's hard to time like that, boy, it really is. A little bit of luck's involved, obviously. That's a great job. First and 10 from the 19. Huskies, two timeouts. Debo slips and falls. We've got maybe one. So now what do the Huskies try and decide? Do they call timeouts? Do they try and go deep? Do they kneel? Do they run that clock out? Well, certainly for me, 
it comes down to how many timeouts you've got. There's Josiah Creedler, not Kurt Cobain. As some might think, loves his camera work like Cobain loved the guitar. Shotgun, it's a high snap. Debo gets it back. That's a good recovery by Darian Hack there, boy. That's twice in a row now. A little sloppy with the football are the Huskies. You can tell right then and there that it's getting cold, but there's also a lot of pushing and shoving down there. That's going to be it. They elected to not bring that ball downfield anymore. They're just going to take it into the half. After one half complete, it's been a tough game. It's been a physical game, but mainly, which I like, it's been a close one. Husky 7, Big Red 0, the Super Bowl of Port Huron. Been a great first half, really. Third quarter coming up after, I believe, the Huskies marching band do their homecoming presentation. Senior court members. All three King nominees are football players, so they are unable to be on the field. 
King will be announced tonight and will be crowned tomorrow night at the dance. The three candidates for homecoming king are Macaulay Hill, Kenny Sanders, and Tyler Smith. Our first nominee for homecoming queen is Lexi Getz. Lexi is escorted by her father, David Getz. The second senior nominee is Georgia Ray Jones. Georgia is escorted by her father, John Jones. The final senior nominee is Maria Supes. Maria's father, Dr. Daniel Supes, is her escort. Last year's homecoming queen, Miss Daniel Rabine, is accompanied by last year's homecoming king, Dominique Lewis. They will be assisting Madeline Price and Holly Escherberg in the crowning for our homecoming queen. It is now time to announce the king. The 2010 PHN homecoming king is... It is now time to announce the queen. Drum roll, please. The 2010 PHN homecoming queen is Maria Sufis. Congratulations to our winners, and thank you to everyone for being here.
And welcome back to the second half from Memorial Stadium. The big rivalry game, Super Bowl of Port Huron and the Battle of Port Huron, as I like to call it. Derek Work, the Big D, again for CPHS Channel 6. Kind of a shocker as far as the scoring is concerned. There wasn't a lot of it there in that first half of play. Just 7-0, Huskies on top. But it was everything I thought it would be from a sense of closeness. Both teams are even. It's an evenly played game thus far. Well, Port here in Northern, I think, despite both defenses, and they've really had the edge, uh, the Huskies have had the edge, in my opinion. I think that back and forth all over the football field, their linebackers are doing a great job right now of containing the Big Reds. But again, second half, time for adjustments. We'll see who makes the best adjustments. John's more rushing the ball. That's been a big thing in this first half of play. Does he continue to do so? Do the Big Reds adjust around that? And also, Alex Smolik, this is what I can't figure out about this football game. Big Reds came out, they were hitting 17 a lot. They just didn't continue to do so as the game continued. The first half continued, rolled right along. I think if they want to be successful, they keep looking for number 17, who I think has also made some great defensive plays uh, as well in this game. So again, both ways, both type of a player. Number 17, Alex Smolik doing a great job. But I think the one thing keeping the Big Reds in this football game right now, they're performing on defense when they've had to perform on defense. And that's one of the main reasons. Huskies were given a gift with the uh, uh, fumbled or bobbled, if you will, punt. Uh, the kick return there was uh, dropped. They jumped right on the football. They had it like, what, the 35, the 30, something along those lines. But the Big Red D stepped up again and stopped the Huskies, and they didn't get any points out of it. So that was maybe the biggest single drive uh, this whole game, the fact that the Huskies came up empty-handed at that point when they very easily could have could have broke the game open. So 7 nothing, big concern for the Big Reds. They've got to get something going on offense. Don't be surprised, though, if this Husky D continues to keep the scoring low in this game. They've done it all season long. I'm not shocked with it one bit. But I love how aggressive the Big D, uh, the Big Red Big D is answering uh, right now to the Huskies Big D. So anything goes right now. And heck, I am the Big D, Derek Wark. <laughs> CPHS Channel 6, glad to have you aboard again for the third quarter, just about underway here, and 7-0, uh, big, big game for both teams, playoff implications for both teams, we've seen a dandy so far, and I see no reason why it won't continue uh, to be a dandy as this game goes along. But very, very important that the Big Reds come out and try and establish their offense again, as I thought they were doing there in the first. I thought, again, they came out with Alex Smolik, they hit him a couple of times, they did a couple of good big plays, but then it kind of stopped. The Husky D adjusted, and the Big Reds didn't really move the ball as well. I think a big key is, can the Big Reds do a lot on this first drive coming up of the first half? And here's another kickoff. There hasn't been many kickoffs tonight, but let's get nasty Port Huron. And as far as the Big Reds... They're trying to do just that. They keep the ball. Lucky for them.
So finally, the Big Reds get something to go their way, and they haven't had many go their way in the first half, that's for sure. The Husky D has played very well, but they've had a few breaks on special teams as well. And something that the coaching staff, I'm sure, is going to try to correct as this game goes along. Shotgun look again, all kinds of tailbacks. The fake, Black lowers his head, gets seven. Well, what do you think of how they're starting the half now? Going from way down and looking up here with the camera. I gotta admit, it's throwing me off. That's something I've gotta get a little bit used to here. But again, rivalry games call for the utmost in Channel 6 technology. There you go. Immediate give, it was not smooth. And to be honest with you, I don't even know who had it. Well, there you go. Number nine, Dominic Schultz. Close to a first, not quite. Very big play coming up now on third and short. Again, CPHS Channel 6, Derek Wark, the Big D, the Port Huron Area School District television station. Here's one of our cameramen over there. Yeah, hello. Way back, that gives you an idea of the crowd. That's not in the stands or anything. That's behind the end zone. That's just great defense right there by the Huskies. Darian Hack, the Debo. <laughs> I don't mind the play call though, because initially it looked like there was something there. And Chapman's got the good speed, he can hit the outside, he can go hard. But he didn't cut it soon enough, and like I said, the Husky D, they will come up, they'll get you. Huge play right now. And the Big Reds bench called time out there, it might be a wise move, they're gonna talk about this. And I don't know if they initially lined up there maybe to draw the Husky D offside with some hard snap counts. But either way, Big Red's using up another one of their timeouts. So now with 10.47 to go in the first half, second half, quote me. <laughs> it's still 7-0 Huskies on top. And a quick reminder here for you. BigDSports.info, the blog I have where I write about these games, tell you which players I think stood out. That's what I'm here for. That's why I do that blog, to give these guys credit. And, and what a treat it was when Mike LaForge wrote in a couple of weeks back. I like that a lot. Gave me some opinions. So again, BigDSports.info. And I'll tell you in a couple days what I thought of this game. Certainly. Can't wait to write about it. They're going to punt now, coming out of the timeout. And it's a boomer. Yep, that's a good punt this time. An over-the-shoulder catch by Noah Kowski. Good move. A couple good moves. Flag on the play out to the 25 and down 26. But don't look now. Flag first. Well, I want to thank a big red fan who came up here. And was it Jarrett's mother? But of Jarrett Chapman, anyway, they gave me a copy of his highlight DVD for 2009 and 2010. I've said all along the season how good Jarrett has been. Well, now I get to see it firsthand. So whoever the fan was, the woman that came up and brought that to me, thanks a lot. And just for you, let's get nasty Port Huron. There you go. I'll definitely be watching that. and. Uh, Certainly best of luck to Jared Chapman and his family in the future. Of course, the, the Big Reds and their senior game is next week. This being the senior game by the Huskies, although if they do win tonight, I just have this feeling they're going to win next week and for some reason get a home game. So it's all about this game right now, really. But I think the winner of this game tonight will make the playoffs, no matter which one it is. They both could, really. From the 14, first and 10. 10.04 to go in the third. Immediate handoff, Kenny Sanders bounces around, drag down, nice tackle. Late flag too. That's a great tackle by Jordan Small. You talk about a guy in this small who has really stepped up. And it's funny, but it's not because 
he's quite a player. But it's funny that a guy named Small could be six foot seven and 195. What a force, man. Good job, Jordan. Good job. And when you make a tackle like that on a guy like Sanders, you have to be absolutely sure that you drag him down. You get a hold of that jersey as he did, and you pop him. But how many guys can you name that line up on a defensive line from the defensive end? Six foot seven. Like, we're seeing the reincarnation of Ed Too Tall Jones, folks. Yeah. <laughs> First and 17 at the seven. This is, I think, offside. There's been unsportsmanlike going on. Pushing, shoving, offsides. And the Huskies are backed right up. This is going to hurt them, boy. Half the distance now. Replaying second down. A fan yelling something down here at Alex Johns Moore, I dare not repeat. <laughs> uh, after the pushing and shoving going on. But that's what this game is all about. You're going to get that. You're going to get pushing, shoving, intensity. And right there, as you can see, you're going to get the ox. Because there he is. Sean Went. First and 20 now. From the four. Johns Moore, shotgun. Going to keep it. Lead block, Kenny Sanders follows him. Gets out past the five to the seven. Well, we'll talk about the CPHS staff here in just a moment. A ton of them tonight, too. I actually have to count. 12 of them. Are you kidding? But again, a game that I expected as far as closeness goes, a game anybody could still win. And look at this place, completely packed, both end zones. Both sets of, of rafters on either side. It's just a tremendous game and a tremendous tradition. Second and 16, Johns Moore play fake, absolutely nothing. You got LaForge over there. You got Small over there. 54, Connor Palmatier and Schultz. And as the Big Red fans do the tomahawk chop, here comes a very big play in this ball game. If nothing else for the field position of where the Huskies are right now. They need 16 for a first down. They may even punt on this play. I think they're gonna. Oh, now it says fourth down. Okay, I was gonna say, Scoreboard late to adjust, here we go. Hill out of his end zone. Pretty good Husky bounce. Big Reds are definitely gonna leave this alone this time. And crowd even yelling to Winslow, get out of the way of that one. I actually like the fact after that bobbled punt, or I think it hit his leg earlier, of Winslow there earlier. And I like the fact that the Huskies didn't score because in a rivalry game like this, when you have mistakes, I don't like seeing the other team capitalize them and make it kind of a deciding factor. And I'm glad this game has remained close too because that's all you can ask for. Only seven nothing as the black attack comes out with great field position now from the 40. Winslow Chapman, Dominic Schultz and Jared Chapman, they're all out there, no wideouts. Run formation without a doubt on first and 10 from the 40. The immediate give, nothing. Kenny Sanders, wow. They think they have the football. I think that's just gonna be down. And I don't know what places have done next year in schools for Kenny Sanders recruiting, but it wouldn't shock me that he goes somewhere, somewhere nice too at that. Because somebody's going to want a linebacker that aggressive. They are. And he's got size. And just the fact that he can play some tailback, too, shows he's a good athlete. Great play right there. Second down and long. 12 is what they have to get from the 42. Black standing at the Husky 45. Backs up to midfield. Now passes outside left side. 
Sanders falls down on the play. Check that it's Haynes. Number 28, not before a big first down. Big Reds. Mark Chapman. Every single time in this game that Mark Chapman has been around the football, I swear the kids made it look easy. Defensively and offensively. Well, that's, that's just a, a defensive fall down right there. Nothing you can do about that. Just lost his footing, but wide open player for the Big Reds, and they're driving now. Not much on first down. Brings up second. There you see the Huskies in their sideline. I should also mention again, if we don't see the Huskies again this season, props and best of luck to Mark Perez, number five, who went down earlier in the year. I think it was week three. And that was a big loss, but he's a great player and a great talent. So Mark Perez, somebody high five number five. There you go, buddy. Justin Black, the keeper, straight up and straight down, but not before some yardage first. It'll bring up third down. And after almost every play right now, there's bumping, there's shoving, there's pushing. You know what's funny about this rivalry too? And it's one that really makes things unique and puts it into perspective for me. And I read it in the Times Herald this week. Most of these kids, they know each other, they're friends. When they talked about the Jarrett Chapman Macaulay Hill matchup, which might I add, we haven't seen much of. Those two are really good friends. So it just goes to show you that it's the game first right now. There's pushing and shoving going on, but after tonight, they'll all probably call each other and celebrate together. So it's just one of those unique rivalry games and, and atmospheres here at Memorial Stadium. And in its own way, it's very special. It is. Anyway, the Channel 6 staff today, cameramen Paul Campo, Emily Desmond, Cecilia Gallio, Josiah Creedler, Nick Newmyers, and the Ox. Big Sean Went. Camera halftime director is Aaron Bitzinger. Slow mo camera Chris Orell. And we'll get to the rest of those names in just a moment. Fourth down and one. High formation look. Immediate give to Schultz. He's close. Initial spot, I think he's got it. And a couple of people down here in front of me with Schultz names on their jerseys. Love that. Probably their parents. His son just got a big first down to keep this drive alive. The rest of the Channel 6 staff tonight, the slow-mo director is the big fella in the truck, EJ Shea. In-game photography. Okay. In-game photography, that's a new one. Brandon the Killer Kovach. Graphics the shoeless one, Chad Schuler. He wears socks though, believe me. And the production supervisor, Ed Sinek, the Green Hornet. There you go. First and 10 for the 14. To pass, Black again. Pressure is late. Tyler Corrigan, unlucky 13. Brings him down. That's the thing about 13 on the Huskies. It's not an every play kind of thing, but he picks his spots and he'll get you. He did this last year, but last year he was primarily a, just a pass rusher. Just a time the snap count, go get him kind of a defender. But now Corrigan developing in more of a complete game. Of course, he's still 80% go after the quarterback as demonstrated there. Second and 19 at the 23, under four ticks to go in the third. Black, outside. Winslow Chapman avoids tackle nicely. I think we might have illegal hands to the face or some kind of a face mask call here against the Huskies. And if so, Big Reds are gonna be in business again. That's an excellent job by number three, Winslow Chapman there to avoid tackle first and foremost. A real athletic play and I think the Huskies thought they had him down. Anyway, football greetings to you and yours. Derek Work, the Big D from Memorial Stadium yet again. My 14th rivalry game, how about that? If that's not a sign we're all getting old, 
I don't know what is. That penalty, by the way, against the Huskies, it'll be a face mask. Good news for the Big Reds. Again, a great play by Winslow. I know he's got double duty, as a lot of these Big Red players do, but I just don't know why they don't use Winslow more often. And even 17 Zmolik, who came out on fire tonight, I don't know why they haven't gone back to him. Unless they truly believe that the Huskies are pass defending very, very well, but it looked easy for Alex in the early going. Second and 12 from the 17, Black to the 11. And now we come to it, folks. The single biggest play of the game thus far. It's gonna be third down and six from the 10. Big pick up there from Justin Black. Can he do it again? Can he tie up this football game against this tough Husky defense? They've been tough all year. Third and six. Black, the rollout. Tries to get inside, but they wrestle him down again. Jalen Hayes, number 99. Don't call him Wayne Gretzky, but he looked like the great one there. He has been something else this season. And really a pleasure to watch is 99. Jalen Hayes. They list him as a linebacker. There's a few kids on that Husky defense that they line up as both defensive line and linebacker. They switch them all around. And, and he's one guy that's a bit of both. Fourth down and eight. They're going for it. Big red crowd getting into it. They're up on their feet now. Final 342 of the third. 7-0. Huskies on top. Shotgun black. Pass rusher from Patterson. End zone. In and out of the hands of Potter. And the Husky defense holds again. It's just sensational D against a football team that, believe me when I tell you, is not a bad offense. I mean, this is an offense in the Big Reds that went to Gross Point South last week and got 35 points. It's really a testament to the Port here in Northern D, and they've done this all season long. From the 12, first and 10. Shotgun, Sanders. Done a lot of stopping and starting today, more so than I think we've seen him do in the past. More of just a north-south runner with power, and he's done a lot of cutback moves. We haven't seen Debo, Darian Hackett much in the way of carries in this one, so that's kind of interesting. Because he's had some big plays and some big runs so far this year. That Husky D remains strong and they're keeping it at seven nothing. It's such a good game because it's close. Second down and nine. Play fake, Johns Moore, all kinds of daylight. Out to the 25 and a first down. I'll tell you something. There's holes and then there's a field. <laughs> Although it collapsed quickly, Alex Johns Moore had half a field to run through on that run. Either the entire team bought the fake or they were deep in pass coverage, but either way, he just took off. Huskies came out in this game really trying to throw the deep ball. They've kind of gotten away from that and they're running a little bit more now, but keep an eye on Macaulay Hill. He hasn't done a lot tonight. They haven't used him that much. John's Moore. Nice kind of a swim move there to get by one tackler. And who gets up last from that pile number nine? Dominic Schultz. Talk about an even game. Two even football teams. Just the one touchdown is all we've seen in this game so far. 
besides one heck of a large crowd. You knew it was going to be big, not just because it's a rivalry game, but both teams came into this game with playoff hopes. Johns Moore, shotgun, tackled immediately and ripped down immediately. Big Red fans loving it here. LaForge, 54 as well, Connor Palmatier. That's just too predictable. I know it's gotten you big yards in the game, but you're only up seven. You can't keep doing that. Final minute of the third. Here he just takes off. Winslow's block, but nobody picks up. 13, Mike LaForge. I tell you, 13s in this game are unlucky to the other team, boy. They really are. LaForge packs a wall up, and the way Corrigan has played in this game speaks for itself. Big play here, third and seven from the 28. High snap, Johns Moore. Good protection, airing it out. It's a wobbly pass. Jumping up and bringing it down is Tyler Smith at midfield. Mark Chapman gets up. Hopefully it's just a cramp. Limping off quickly. I think he's going to be okay. He just needs a breather. But that's not Chapman's fault at all. It's a wobbly pass for starters. They got away with one here. Aired out all day. That's just Tyler Smith going up and getting that ball. What more can you say? And it's not like they didn't have defense on him. Mark Chapman's around the ball all day long. That's just one where... Smith goes up, uses his hands, brings it down. Smith, the six foot, 220 pounder. And the scoreboard says zero. That's gonna do it, folks. The third quarter complete. It is still seven, nothing Huskies. After three quarters complete in the Battle of Port Huron, but hey, this is the kind of game the Huskies wanted to win. Big Reds need some offense. Will they get it in the fourth? We'll see. Derek Work, the Big D, CPHS Channel 6 from Memorial Stadium. One final quarter left in the Battle of Port Huron. Or is there? We'll see coming up next. everyone to the fourth quarter of play from Memorial Stadium. Again, Derek Wark, the Big D. Everything's Big D tonight. You got a Big D in the booth. You got Big D coming from the Huskies and Big D coming from the Big Reds as well. The Battle of Port Huron, very close game. Just 7-0 Huskies on top. Again, CPHS Channel 6, Port Huron Area School District Television Station. Four wide again on first down. Johns Moore operating, airing it out deep again. That's overthrown. Well, that one was clearly overthrown. I don't know if they have a equipment issue in high school, but Macaulay Hill's uniform's out, and I was kind of under the impression at this level you got to tuck that in. I don't know. There he is there, mid-screen, number 12. They've tried to go to him tonight, but it's been unsuccessful. But the Big Reds were without a doubt expecting that. Probably watched a lot of tape this week. Second and 10 from the 50. Shotgun. The shotgun T. Alex Johns Moore comes out of it, and he's down right away for the sack. You pick a big red, chances are they were there. Three, Winslow. 17, Alex Smolik. And 13, well, as always, Mike LaForge.
Well, they say defense wins. And football, I definitely agree wholeheartedly. And this is a fine example today because these two defenses out there right now are flat out doing it. There's some nervous Big Red fans. Huskies have had a seven nothing lead for a long, long time. It's third and 12 from the 48. Back to pass, Johns Moore, good pressure, sacked again. Winslow Chapman. Well, I paused a bit there because I can't hear myself think right now. Winslow Chapman couldn't get any better. A sack if you tried right through and bam. That could be just what the Big Reds need. Low snap again on that punt, look out. It's a beautiful high punt though by Hill. They almost dropped the football. 18, Corey Hutchinson of the Big Reds. Or is that Chapman? I think that's 10, Mark Chapman. Fans down here wanted some kind of a penalty call for not enough room to catch that ball but it looked to me like he had plenty of room to catch that ball. Called the fair catch and almost dropped the fair catch, might I add. Again, I've, I've mentioned this in previous weeks. In football, they used to, at all levels, really monitor that, really watch the distance you have from the special teams player about to give you a tackle, a womp, and where you catch the football from. But right there, I think he gave him enough room at any rate. From the 28, first and 10. Back to pass. Black again, outside, Smola caught it. Back lateral this time, giving the Huskies a taste of their own medicine, what they tried to do earlier. And I got a huge play out of it. Not so much for the Big Reds, but if you're gonna pitch back like that, that's the guy you wanted in the hands of, number six, Jared Chapman. Again, CPHS, what a wild one. Seven nothing, Huskies. The one touchdown, and that's been it. Derek Work, the big D, CPHS Channel 6. Shotgun, no wideouts lined up this time, off play fake, black, forward, lost the football. And are they saying he's down? Our Big Red's gonna have the saving grace again. Huskies get up with it, they have the ball. Big Red fans absolutely hate it, but there's no instant replay at this level. They hate it. Here's the replay right away. Oh, that's close. It would depend if he's down or not, obviously. That is very, very close. We've had a couple of close calls tonight. It would come down to whether or not his knee was down, or he was laying down on the side, so. Was he down? That's the question. We need to see that one again, definitely. Right on the bubble. The Big Red fans hate it. They're screaming every obscenity they can. But a turnover again. Debo, the lone quarterback here now, he takes a direct snap, keeps it, goes up the middle between center and guard. Six, maybe seven. Well, we have a big red down, Jordan Small. Well, that was hard to tell. It's real hard to tell because he's kind of on his side right as that ball's leaving him. So it's, it's one where you'd need a replay on the field. And maybe one day, king of wishful thinking, I know, I know, maybe one day at this level, they'll even get it at this level, talking about replay. Until then, we depend on the big fella in the truck, E.J. Shea, to bring us the replays. From the 31. First and three, Debo battling forward. And he got to just shy of the 15. 
Well, I said it earlier. Why isn't Debo getting more carries? This is an elusive player. Good cutback ability. That guy there says Connell for president. Apparently, Connell appeals to the shirtless voters. Those guys have to be cold. I'm sorry, I'm cold in a coat. From the 16, first and 10, Debo. He loves to dance, doesn't he? That first little juke moves, he pulls off almost every run he makes. Kind of like Barry used to do for the Lions. Even when you didn't really need him to do it, he still did it. I guess it's kind of what made him special, but. Sanders and Debo certainly giving the Huskies strong depth at the running back positions. The pack really getting into it. Big Red fans on the other side trying to answer. That pack over there is one loud student section, let me tell you. The Husky seniors trying to do what they haven't done yet, beat the Big Reds to go out winners in this rivalry. Big Reds trying to have their three in a row. Victories in this rivalry continue with no points on the board through three and a half quarters. The Husky D is doing it. Kenny Sanders battling forward, got maybe one. Tackle made by guess who? Mike LaForge. Friday the 13th himself. And there's some players hurt now, like pretty well once a drive you're getting guys down, but that's the nature of a rivalry game like this. You're gonna get players hurt. You're gonna give that little extra oomph. You hate to see players hurt, obviously. That's what football is though. Derek Work, the Big D, CPHS Channel 6, the Port Huron Area School District television station. We saw a game early where both offenses kind of came out and tried to, to dictate deep plays early. Huskies eventually did get on the board, 7-0, but that's been the only scoring in this one. Since then, for the most part, both these teams have diverted right back to the run. There you see the big red band kind of holding their heads down in concern. And there you see the, the Husky side. From where I'm sitting and looking across the field, empty spots, huh, there might be two. This place fills up, no doubt about it. And one of the better high school facilities around. Well, players of the game, and it's really tough to, to narrow them down so far in a seven nothing game you look back and you think, well, there hasn't been a lot of scoring, so it's been a game dominated by the defense. I would think offensively, though, you'd have to say Alex Johns more for the Huskies. Just because he continued to get a lot of yardage when it was needed the most, particularly in that first half. Big Reds offensively, there hasn't been a lot. Zmolik started off the game, and I thought he was just going to be spectacular. They haven't broke free Jared Chapman like I think they'd like to. Even Robotham had a nice catch, but there's been very limited offensively. So I think you just give it to Black because he's moved the ball a little bit. Again, Huskies have done a fabulous job offensively keeping what I felt was a very good big red offense in check today. Week two here at Memorial Stadium. Gross Point South beat the Huskies 10 to seven. And I thought then, what a great defense. They were big up front, they were loaded. But the Big Reds went into Gross Point South last week, 35 points up against them, five TDs from Justin Black. I was really shocked when I saw that. I was a happy shock, no doubt about that, but shocked nonetheless. And, and that tells you right there how well the Husky D is playing. When you have a team that puts up 35 against GPS, and then they come here and they're skunked so far. It's, it's, it's a statement, it is. But then again, I look across the field and I think Big Red D, they're responding to everything the Huskies have done. Unfortunately here, obviously an injured timeout and 
we hope all the best for the player that's down. Was that Cecilia Gallio in the air? It was. Oh, well, wait a minute. No, it was the other one. The other one. <laughs> Emily Desmond. There she is in the air. Way up. I can't believe we actually have a, a sky jack or scissor lift, if you will, tonight. That's kind of funny. It's funny they do that. Only for the rivalry game can you see that. Certainly, we wish this Husky all the best and not a lot of movement. Well, you like to see the arm moving and all the rest. He's moving just fine. That's good to see. But in these kind of situations, you just kind of cross your, your fingers, your toes, and and all the rest. Huskies driving right now, and the way this game has gone, any more scoring, and you'd think it's almost all she wrote. 14 points at this stage would be huge, so as well as the Big Red D has played, it's time to step up if you want this victory. It really is, because the offense just didn't put points up today. But I think on the whole, the Husky D is still the telltale factor, because you've got good athletes in this Big Red team. The Chapmans, I said it earlier, great players, great athletes. Certainly Jarrett, one of the fastest players on the football field. And Black with all his passing ability. But it's just the score that is amazing me right now. And if your defense can outdo Gross Point South, wow. As mentioned, when the Big Reds were 1-3 and three earlier in the season, I didn't really know what to think. I knew they were frustrated, but let's face it, it was a tough first four weeks for them. The schedule gods were not in their favor, 1-3. and three, But then they pull off three in a row, games against Clintondale and Lance Cruz, when really they needed to win those games. And then, of course, the Gross Point South victory, their best victory all year long last week. Well, here you see the injury. Kenny Sanders, what a loss that would be. Just kind of twisted his leg, really. And it really annoys you, this game, when, when sometimes, depending on how you go down and how you're tackled, sometimes the most flukish tackle can put you out. Here you see it again. It's hard to really tell because where they go after him and where they get his leg and all the rest, it's got to be a leg injury. And Well, he does kind of kick out as he falls. It looks innocent enough, but he twisted something going down. Hopefully, again, not serious. There you see a couple people who have the right idea. I don't know if those are Snuggies or just what they are down there on the field, but it works. It keeps you warm, right? So again, thanks to, it's probably a Chapman that brought this up. Loads of Chapmans on this football team. Mark, Winslow, Jarrett, they're all good players, like I said. And one of their family members brought me up a DVD earlier of Jarrett's highlights. Well, trust me, I'll be watching that. I'll give that my time. I should, all, all year long I've been building that guy up and well, rightfully so, I mean, he's a great athlete. And I said tonight though, coming in, how important it was that Jarrett got away from quarterbacking and went back to the corner or defensive back because as much as he was a great quarterback and a great backup quarterback and how lucky the Big Reds were to have him in the first place to back up Black when he was hurt, if this kid, this Jared Chapman, is really the number one rated player in the Port Huron Times Herald of the top 25 for his defense, then it's good to have him back there on defense. That's not Kenny Sanders, by the way. Sanders is over there wishing him well. That's number 24, Austin Pickering. And the crowd chanting Austin, and that's a great, that's just great, that's class act. But as a senior and a leader, to have Kenny Sanders over there and, and yell to him and say, we're going to get this one for you, that's what being a leader is all about. That's, there you go. 
So now the Huskies something to play for, if there's not already enough for both teams to play for. Again, big reds. If you've left the country or something like that, that's the only way you wouldn't know that. Four and three. They need a victory to keep their playoff hopes alive. Huskies need one to make the playoffs. Huskies win them both. And it's likely a home game back here in week 10. Big Reds win them both playoffs. Huskies win one of them, they get playoffs. So I just narrowed it all down for you right there. Big Reds somehow pull this victory off and you could have both Port Huron teams in. That is so unlikely and I don't know how often it's happened, but here we go, back to it. We certainly wish 24, Austin Pickering the best. Why? Because he's a TG tough guy, that's why. Third and eight, airing it out, end zone, jumps up to get it, Macaulay Hill bobbles the football, and it's incomplete. Well, it looked like he might have had a step. That play just more of a fade in the end zone. And again, you play the end zone as another defender in those situations. This is a long kick, but a very important kick. A 31 yard field goal for Quinn Kotzko attempt. Place down, up. Does it go through? It goes through. Quinn Kotzko from 31 gives the Huskies a 10 nothing lead. A couple of reasons why that kick is so huge. One, last week, the Huskies lost on an extra point. They couldn't convert it. In this game, though, it's huge because it's now a two-possession game. If you're the Big Reds right now, you got to look to the guy who got you here. Justin Black. Five TDs last week, shut out this week. If they're gonna win this game, it's Black's time to shine. If there was any doubt though, coming into this one, how talented both defenses are really, but particularly the Huskies is, there's no doubting now. And what a turnaround. Coach Connell is my pick for coach of the year regardless. Because how do you turn around a team that wins one game, two games, one game, every year, and then all of a sudden they're winning five games or six games, playing with more heart and intensity. It's amazing how he's turned it around. Kickoff, let's get nasty Port Huron. Off the bounce, Therese Watkins. Not bad, 39. Well, the scoreboard right now says no timeouts for the Big Reds. If that's true, being down 10, two possessions, it's gonna be tough. Either way, they have got to come down with points on this drive. I would think it's almost a must. Black, shotgun, to pass, stepping up in the pocket. Spin move, stays on his feet. Great move, Justin Black. Six, right on. Well, that's just making the linebacker look sick. Spin move, Black, and that's not the first time tonight that he's done that. Second and six, time ticking out on the Big Reds. Back to pass, Black again to the outside. Winslow caught, not quite the sticks. Pushed back hard, Debo. And he better watch himself looking over here on the sidelines and taunting a bit. A good little player, no doubt. It shows you the kind of talent that these kids had all along at Northern. And everybody said they had this kind of talent. They just needed a change, and they got it. Man, did they get it. 
Third and short, outside, caught, Zmolik. Nice job for the first down. Well, Black must love throwing to that guy. 6'4", 200, he'll go up and get anything you throw. Quarterbacks love the big wideouts. From the 45, first and 10. Going deep this time and a stoppage of play before the play. And we have an offside against the offense, the Big Reds. Defensive player of the games. There is a lot of people you could say on both teams. And you know what, for that reason, I'm gonna bail out and I'm gonna do what the Big D never does up here in the booth. I'm giving defensive players of the game to both units. And it is a cop out, I admit it's a cop out. But they've been that good. I mean, 10 nothing through three and three quarter quarters. Yeah. Wow. Talk about defensive minded. I thought this game was gonna be close, but I didn't know the defenses would take over like this. Screen pass, look to Schultz. Upfield quick, drops the football. Big Reds jump on it, and thank heavens for them, they did. Richard Drummond in the right place at the right time. Oh man, are they lucky. Here you see the replay. Screen is set up well because Black avoids the pass rush. There you see they had plenty of blockers. He just got stripped, but again, when you have manpower over there, can be used to your advantage even on fumble recoveries. Calder Reno immediately jumps up and downs Black. I noticed Reno was still limping earlier too, running off the football field. When that kid number six started out this year, Calder Reno, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. He was that good. But he got hurt or something and he's never been the same since. He's still a good player though. I'll take Calder Reno with one leg. <laughs> over a lot of guys, believe me. From the 40, third and five, this is two play territory now, I would think. Black, airing it out deep. In and out of the hands of Hunter Potter again. You know what, you could look at that and say, Hunter, when are you gonna grab those balls? But you know what? Something is also said for a guy, and I've said Debo was like this, that is always around the ball, and tonight, Potter has been around the ball every, I'd say probably every drive. So he's at a whale of a game. Dropsies or not, he's made the defensive plays. Well, biggest play so far of the game, I would say for the big red offense. If they're gonna come on track, it's gotta be now, and it's gotta be black to do it. That clock continues to tick. Husky crowd getting heavily involved in this. Back to pass, screen again. This time they pick it up again, and a great open field tackle by 44, James Glombowski for the turnover on downs. 44, let me tell you something, Glombowski. I noticed earlier in the year, that's a kid that jumps up and makes special teams plays. But he makes big plays, and that's why you put him in defensively. That's why you give him more time. Man, he had it there and he flat out made the play. If Glumbowski doesn't make that tackle, Zmolik has the first. That's a great tackle when they need it the most right there. It is. I know it's early to say it, but that could seal the deal. What a defensive performance by the team in Mays. Debo, direct snap, tries to get to the outside, can't do it, but got a yard. Jordan Small, the tackle. So first and foremost, I wanna congratulate both teams on a well-played game tonight, and a rivalry game that I knew was gonna be close from the get-go. But to see a strong defensive game like this, you never see this in football anymore. It's known as a wide open offensive game now. 
I like defensive games that are close. I have to say I do. It's exciting. And this game has been. Debo again, direct snap. It's a double reverse and they're gonna throw this football. Johns Moore is doing it. Deep down sideline, Macaulay Hill. Not quite. What a play call. <laughs> Holy mackerel. A double reverse toss, and you know what? It was actually Alex Johns Moore who threw the ball. Here's a replay of that one. One, two, and it's in Johns Moore's hands right there. So he is actually your quarterback. So they're trying a little bit of razzle dazzle now. And again, Macaulay Hill had a step. Third down and 10. Big play for the Big Red D. Low snap again, John's more keeper, that's not gonna get it done. But you know what, you do it. You do it because you're up two possessions, you wanna tick the clock down, and it doesn't matter. The only thing that matters right now is the clock. Of course you come out to punt this time. And you know what, that's a tribute to your defense. That's smart by Coach Connell. Your defense have played this well so far, they've gotten the goose egg. They're the ones that have to decide it. Put the game in the hands of the defense where it belongs. Absolutely. 340 now. Punt from the 25. Good spin on it. Right in the hands of Winslow, makes the first man miss. Can't make them all miss. Big red blocker there, 23, went right by his man. Made sure he absolutely hammered the guy who fell down though off the Winslow swim move there, but we have a flag in the play, and I think it's gonna be on sportsmanlike conduct. There were a couple of opportunities there in the first half of play where I really thought they could have called a lot of unsportsmanlike, but in a rivalry game, you expect it, and you kinda do let it go. I tell you, when you see Michigan-Ohio State games, there's more that goes on behind the camera than you can be aware of, and they don't call it. Rivalry game here tonight and the same kind of thing has happened. 3.29 left in the game, still nothing on the scoreboard for this highly touted Big Red offense. I am in complete shock at that. I can't believe it. Coach Connell Better give the ball to his 11-man unit. That's all I can say. Blitz from the outside. Nobody picks up Patterson. Good job by Black getting out of the pocket and then throwing that one away, actually. Patterson on that play was not blocked at all. He could have walked in. It's cold out there. Supposed to reach, I think, a high of 37 by midnight. Huh, summer so long. But a great night for football. You can't complain because it's football weather. Here we go. 323 now from shotgun. Black to pass again, airing it out deep again. And uh, through the hands of actually Husky defender there, 28. Ben Haynes, yes sir, good job. Right there, Husky mascot. Woof. And it's appropriate that he's walking around there with the Husky swag sign. Right Ox. Yeah, boy. <laughs> Go blue. <laughs> All right, buddy, thumbs up. The Ox is always colorful. From the 46, third and 10. Black again, outside, look out, that was behind him. Smolik, that's not gonna get enough yardage and that's gonna be a fourth down. And you know what, because there's no timeouts on that clock right now, this is it. This is the football game. Huskies stop them and they have the brick fouler. It's been three in a row for the Huskies, so it would be the first time 
in four years that they haven't done it until now. Black to the outside on the QB rollout. This is it, airing it out. Broken up and the Huskies are gonna do it. Benjamin Haynes again. I cannot say enough, even though I have. <laughs> what a great job this defensive unit has done from the get-go. The first four games of the year, I don't know why the schedule was like that, but the first four games of the year saw the Huskies right here. And I'm telling you, the defense was tremendous in all four weeks. Wow. And to shut down a team, again, that got 35 last week on a good team. I just can't believe it. John's Moore, straight up and straight down, and they're just about running the clock out now. Two and 30 ticks left in the fourth. Again, CPHS, Channel 6, Derek Work, the Big D. While they're calling timeout, Big Red's on the field. The scoreboard says no timeouts, so... Got to go with what I see, but apparently they did have their timeouts left. Again, BigDSports.info. I don't know about tomorrow, but definitely Sunday. I'll be writing about this one. And you folks seeing the rebroadcast, of course, here on Monday or Tuesday. It'll be up by then. www.BigDSports.info. I'll tell you what I thought of this one. And certainly that Husky defense. But let's be honest here, okay? The Big Red D was every bit as good. It's just a couple of breaks was what the Husky D got, and they capitalized on them because really neither offense did a whole heck of a lot. You know what the biggest key might have been? Are those John's Moore runs. I think he had three or four in a row in the first half that got them the TD and put them up seven, and that really is the difference, obviously, but because it was really the only bit of offense in a, in a pack, in a string that the, uh, that the Huskies had. Shotgun now with 2.24 to go. Kenny Sanders. Not so sure if he didn't just cut that back upfield and take the hit, knowing he wants to stay in bounce and force the clock to run in and force the Big Reds into timeouts. Again, a game dominated by defense. I'm somebody that likes a lot of scoring in sports. But tonight, for some odd reason, it was refreshing that it was low scoring. Well, this is gonna go against the Huskies. They're asking Coach Mullins what he wants to do to decide this one, and they're just gonna decline it, I guess. So it's a hold, Huskies, and they decline. There you go. So it's third down now, and a really big third down. You can expect the Big Reds to stop them. This isn't going to be anything more than maybe a, a Kenny Sanders tough up the middle runner, a John Smore sneak. And the clock continues to tick, so obviously the Big Reds are out of timeouts now. Final two minutes. Fort Gratiot up north will be celebrating tonight. Johns Moore airing it out deep. Deep. Macaulay Hill, it's in his hands to the five. Well, we have a flag first, and it might be coming back, but you know darn well, seeing that pass go back to Macaulay Hill again, that he was going to catch something eventually. He couldn't keep this up, where things were just not going his way, passes just overthrowing him. Here you see the replay. It's coming back, by the way. It's a legal procedure, actually, is the call. Here's Hill. Well, that's just great hands. Great hands at the seven, brings it to the five, but illegal procedure first. 
A minute 41 now to go in the fourth. Huskies the 10-0 lead. So replaying third down now. Officially third and 15 from the 49. <laughs> Big Red fans showing their disgust to the referees. <laughs> they want this game to just keep on a rolling. So shotgun again. Third down and 15 from the 49. They're really running this clock down. Big Reds are just gonna run out of time. Johns Moore, shotgun again. Well, they might even take the delay of game. They might just take the penalty. They're in no hurry to snap the football, that's for sure. Running this clock right down. Now they snap it. Johns Moore deep to Hill again. Caught this time. And that, folks, is gonna be it. Well, Macaulay Hill, <laughs> what can you say about him? You knew eventually he was gonna do it. He's done it all season long, and why wouldn't he? Finally, the Port Huron Northern Huskies have won a game in this rivalry, folks. They've been great all season long. The pass rush was there, pass defense really was there, but Hill has hands, and might I also add, an over-the-shoulder grab, not as easy as it looks. He makes it look easy, that's what it is. Final 57 seconds now. And the only thing left to do now is drench Pat Connell, but I don't think they're gonna do that, it's just too cold. <laughs> he got drenched the one week, his inaugural game. So really, first and foremost, I wanna say to the big reds, Defensively, you guys played a sensational game. Nothing to be ashamed about. You're going to go to four and four. Five and four, though, can still get you in if lucky enough. It's a rarity, but don't give up next week, boys. Take it to St. Clair, man. Get that victory. It just came down to the fact that the big red offense was stifled by a defense that is just really a good unit. I called it at the beginning of this game. I stand by it. Huskies are for real. And head coach Pat Connell, if I haven't already said it 800 times, I'll say it again, a tremendous job. No matter what now, because they've made the playoffs. But just to turn everything around for this team, a team that has had limited success the last decade. All of a sudden, he produces a winner with the same players and the same makeup that they had last year. It really is a tremendous job. And really, you can't say enough about Coach Van Drew, the defensive coordinator, and the job he has done with this defensive unit. I feel terrific for number 20 on the football field, Kenny Sanders who is just beside himself down there right now, to the left of the screen. Unbelievable. A senior, fourth-year player, has not beat the Big Reds yet, and finally, he goes away a winner. Well, being as it was seniors' night for the Port here in Northern Huskies tonight, the final regular season game that the Husky seniors will ever play at Memorial Stadium. I want to congratulate all the Husky seniors on a great 2010 season. And good luck to you all in wherever your futures take you. Indeed, a great win for the Huskies tonight. Congratulations to the Huskies on making the MHSAA playoffs. Congrats again have to go out for my pick for Coach of the Year, Pat Connell. He's completely turned this Husky system around. Simply a fantastic job. And on that note, I can now say in dedication to those Husky seniors, entire Husky team, entire Northern student body and their great coaching staff, Polish off your mantle, Coach Connell. The Brick Fowler Trophy is coming back to the north.
the presentation of the Rip Roller Memorial Trophy. Superintendent Ron Moline and Assistant Superintendent Eddie Kimmel presenting the Brook Baller Memorial Trophy to Fort Huron Northern Head Coach Pat Connell. Thank you very much for attending tonight's game. On behalf of our players and coaches, please drive carefully going home.